This video is going to be about making a little rainbow texture. Uh, it's a useful texture to have in your library because you can use it for all kinds of testing and to control things like the anisotropic effect because the colors can be used as vector components. So I've just made a, a default bright sphere, squash it down a bit and arranging it in the middle of my scene so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to edit the material it's in the default material at the moment and I'm just going to work with the diffuse channel to keep things simple. So I'm going to put a texture in A oh and you can see that it's already loaded the one that uh, we'll be aiming to make but we've got to start from somewhere so if I hold the shift key down and uh, go down to basic and we'll start with this basic gradient bar. Now as things stand, what we need to know is what its scaling is, what its mapping mode is, before we even start editing it. So the scale is 12.5 and what we want to do is use 20. Now this is important because as you can see almost immediately choosing the right scale will mean the pattern when it's spherical mapped circulates round and in this case it repeats itself almost exactly, not quite. So if we can get the scales exactly right, the scaling factors, we can get an effect that's completely seamless when it's spherical mapped all the way around. And you will be able to use this uh, texture component with all the mapping modes but it, its most useful form is in the spherical mapping. So go into the deep texture editor and we'll open some of these little dialogues and we'll just check things like the final combination there's no phase in it and there's no filtering and in this first component there's no filtering and no phase so everything to begin with is just in this noise here uh, we won't look at bump mapping we'll just keep to the colors at the moment now to get a spectrum and to get it to wrap perfectly we're going to need different colors and a different scale so I'll go into the noise you see it's being driven by linear sign and the scale values are 62, 62, 61. Uh, I've determined that if the scale is set it's a bit fiddly to do this, exactly 63 and I hold the Alt key down and click on any one of those it'll make the value the same and I'll also reset the directions to zero so hold the Alt key down and click on zero it's one dimensional which means it appears in these vertical lines if you alter the dimensions it changes the pattern we're just going to leave it at one dimensional no octaves standard mode won't make any difference with the uh, standard mode and linear sign at the moment and now to if we were to change this to red and this second colour to green and this last one to blue we can now see that we've got red, green and blue, but that the that in linear interpol 3 the bands aren't overlapping enough to give us any other colours in the spectrum that we're looking for. And now you can see that this is all mapping perfectly and uh, and and it's uh, it's getting it's getting somewhere like we were aiming for, but what I want this is to be a continuous spectrum starting in red going all the way around and finishing in red again, having gone through all the other colours. So go back into the material editor, into the deep texture editor, and now we consider what we can do to combine these. If I was to take this component and drag and drop it into the second component and add these two together, you can see we can get different bands of colour. It's not quite a spectrum yet though. So what we'll do is I'll look at changing this to linear interpol 2, which changes the spread of the colours and I'm going to change this second component because it no longer uses the blue to black. So now I can drag and drop that one into there and then look at making this red the green which gives us yellow here. Now the next challenge is to offset this green so that the greens are slightly away from the red so we get red, yellow and green. To achieve that I'm going to go into this, select this component, go into the phase and select um, sign 
uh, no octaves, one dimension. Hold the Alt key down and click on zero so everything's zeroed and then turn the frequency down to zero. The result of this is that it allows us to push to offset the the component, the component two. And if I if I now increase the phase value you can see it offsets. What I want to do is first determine what one complete cycle is. To do this, I try and get it back to yellow again. So uh, I've, through testing, I've found that one complete cycle is executed in, at a phase of value of 126. And what I did was I started at what I thought was the middle and stepped so far till I see a bit of red and green, and step back and step so far till I see a bit of red and green. 126 gives us a complete cycle. We're going to use red, green, and blue. So if we divide that number by 3, we get 42. So if I set the phase value here at 42, which is a bit fiddly because I've got no direct numeric entry, you can see we've now offset the green from the red. And then if I drag and drop this and do add again, and change this color to blue, just blue, there we go. And then for, with this one, we'll change the, with this selected, we'll change the phase to 84, which is twice 42. We now get an offset, get something that's looking closer to the rainbow pattern I was looking for. But you'll note that the, there's no strong yellow. It's a bit dominated by the red, the green, and the blue. And the reason, I believe, for that is the the driving component being linear sign has a different response uh, when it uh, in, in the way it spreads. So if we change this to sign we get a broader spread of red in there which will give us more intermediate colour. So I'll change all the linear signs from just linear sign to sign function. The offsets still work, the scaling factor still works and now we get a better rainbow pattern. Although it's yellow is not looking very strong still, uh, you get a bit more of effect of that by increasing the sunlight. So if we increase the sunlight a bit, you can see there is a bit of yellow in there. It just needed a bit more light to bring it out. Now if I, if I move to the overhead view, there we've got red moving around to red in half a cycle and then so there's, there's two cycles of the spectrum there. Uh, to achieve one full spectrum, we can reduce this value, the x scaling, down to 10. And then if we look now, as I'd hoped and planned, we can now achieve one full spectrum in one cycle. So that is essentially it for the tutorial really. It's fairly straightforward. I prefer if I can get this to save in this way to have it at 20%. Uh, this is a handy value because that's also the scaling for a panoramic when you're um, trying to get a texture to line up with the terrain. Um, and in order to get something to come out of the texture library with its correct scaling it can be a bit fiddly. The first time it randomly pulls something out of the library it will bring it scaling. After that every time you pick a, a texture out it will take the scaling from the one that you've already loaded. So if I wanted to make sure this one always comes out with a scaling of 20 and it's picked you need to produce a category for it on its own. So if I hold shift key down and go to the library here I'm going to have to add my own category. So this is one, I think this is called a category, for one thing. Right, then I'm going to add here my uh, rain bow texture. Right, and that should be now saved. So if I now make a default material and click on a square, it'll bring that in at the correct scaling. Now if I go for my default material and I pick um, say uh, another material here and it's loaded its own textures in, then if I now replace this texture, bearing in mind that you see this texture is world space mapped and it's also got this scale value of 12.5 uh, there, if I 
hold the shift key down and click on texture locate where my category was where I saved this and remember this was 20% spherical mapped if I load that in it actually retains the values that it had in previously so uh, this is this is less helpful now if I use this unuse spot here and pop one in anisotropy and because that slot has been unused it's recovered the fact that it was spherical mapped and the scaling factor so what you've got to be aware is most of the time you'll be loading this texture component in it won't remember what its correct scaling factor is you have to remember that and it won't remember what its best mapping mode is but this is just the way that these things uh, usually turn out so I've shown you how to make this uh, material and uh, I've shown you how to recover it sometimes but not always you see because that wasn't reset and I left the lab that will no doubt retain the world space mapping mode there you go so to to bring it back because it's going to be in the correct category to bring it back now I've been in and out so it's cleared everything down when I hit it now we get 20% and spherical mapping so it's just a a bit of a faffy point that I wanted to make for those of you who want to be sure that they all come in on the right scaling value so that's the end of the tutorial then how to make this simple rainbow or spectrum uh, texture component that uh, hopefully will go on to do other more interesting things with.